I mean, that $100 will be captured under the debit side. Okay, so we're trying to allocate the plan assets value cost to expense account. The original purchase cost is a certain amount that will turn that part into depreciation expense. Also, at the same time, recorded under another contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. So these two accounts always goes hand in hand, goes together. Whenever we're trying to record the value decline for a certain long-term asset, we'll be debiting depreciation. And the credit side is always accumulated depreciation. This is, this is a special case for assets. So earlier, remember the supplies case, we just directly reduced supplies and turned that into supplies expense. Okay, so here for long-term assets, because the value usually is um, it's a lot costly than other supplies, other short-term assets. So under balance sheet, we usually have, remember, there's furniture, there's land, building. You have different T accounts. In those accounts on the debit side, you will usually see the original purchase cost. It's always there. Whenever we record reducing the value of those assets, we have a separate contra account called accumulated depreciation to record the part that we estimate has gone down, the decline of the values for long-term assets, So we, which means that we normally don't touch the original long-term asset account until we're actually selling this asset or until this asset is no longer useful anymore. We're taking it out from balance sheet completely. Otherwise, you usually see this account there for good. And this amount, we usually don't go back to change it. It represents the original purchase price. And whenever we depreciate the asset, we use these two. It will be debiting depreciation expense. As I mentioned earlier, this is an expense account. It holds the expense of the uh, long-term assets. On the right-hand side, we have a contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. Okay, so under the original asset account, it represents the original, the book that, the um, original historical cost of the asset, which is the purchase price that we made earlier. But then if you see under balance sheet accumulated depreciation, then that means, for example, here, the company has used the asset so if you have used the asset for two years, you see two hundred dollars here, and you have to see another hundred dollars here. Okay, so the the amount you see under accumulated depreciation basically rep will represent you can tell how long the corporation has had this asset based on the amount you see under accumulated depreciation. The longer the asset has been staying in the business, the more accumulated depreciation you will see here. Okay, so this accumulated depreciation in the normal balance is the right side. It's the opposite of regular asset account. Just because itself, it represents furniture or building or machinery's degraded value. Okay, let's take a look at an example here. Assuming that there's a furniture, a piece of furniture that costs $18,000. And let's say the useful lifetime, we estimate that it can be used for the business, within the business for five years. So that's about 60 months. Okay, so if we want to measure a month of depreciation, this monthly statement, that would be $300. Okay, use $18,000 divided by 60. Okay, that would be $300. And we want to measure that the business has been using this furniture for this month would be debiting depreciation expense, crediting accumulated depreciation for furniture. Okay, depreciation expense is debited. Remember, whenever there's expense that accumulates, we debit this account. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. Contra means the opposite. Okay, contra asset means the opposite of a regular asset account, but it still falls under asset category because it's trying to capture the assets value that has been reduced for furniture, for building, for machinery, for long-term assets. Okay, so the opposite of regular asset account, its normal balance is the credit side, but it's still part of the asset family. So 
Whenever you see an accumulated depreciation account there, that definitely means that the business has some sort of long-term assets in the upper part of the financial statements. So those two, if you match together, you can figure out the book value of the asset. Okay, so meaning that if you have the furniture that worth $18,000, you see $18,000 listed under furniture, if you see $300 listed under accumulated depreciation, then you know right now you can estimate the value of the current asset will be $18,000 minus $300. So the $300 represents using the asset for a month. And so for this example, we have furniture purchased, say, May 1st, $18,000, and it will be used for five years. Five years, if you're doing a monthly statement, then every single month we will be recording $300 of value decline for this long-term asset furniture. So this is an entry that we're trying to capture within this time period, just for a month, how we have been using this furniture asset. So in accounting, we always try to measure up the part of the expenses that relates to revenue. So for long-term asset, this is how we measure how we have been using long-term assets. We divide it, divide it by the lifetime of the asset, turn that into expense. Okay, so furniture value here, under a furniture's T account, you will always see $18,000 here. This represents the original purchase price. And then you will have an opposite, an accumulated depreciation account, which is a contra asset account. You will see this $300 listed here, opposite side. Remember, accumulated depreciation reduces assets value. And then under the expense side, you will have depreciation expense, also $300. So these two refers to this transaction here, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation, all together represents that this $18,000 worth of furniture is no long doesn't doesn't no longer no longer has the value of eighteen thousand dollars. It reduced three hundred dollars. So when it comes to June, we will do this transaction exactly the same all over again. We would do another three hundred dollars. Next month, another three hundred dollars. This is a recurring entry that happens. But we just spread the cost along the years to represent how the assets have been growing old in the corporation. Okay, so we do this for each and every type of long-term asset except land. Okay, land is an exception that we don't depreciate the value, but all the other accounts we do depreciations for it. Okay, land, we usually assume that it has an indefinite lifetime. So land is one of the exceptions of long-term assets that we do not depreciate. All the others, building, furniture, fixtures, machinery, equipment, all the others that you can think of that last in the business for longer than a year, we have to depreciate it. So furniture may be harder to link to why it's growing old, but if you think about machinery, think about equipment, the longer the use, that you use, usually in the corporation, the more repairment or maintenance expense you will have to uh, use to support the machinery to work as well as before when you just purchased it. So that is pretty much the uh, why we're doing this depreciation. So the longer in the corporation this asset is being used, usually the value will gradually degrade. Okay, this is what we're trying to do in depreciation account. So if we take a look at T accounts after recording this, under the asset category, the upper table there, see normal asset furniture account $18,000. You will always see the original purchase cost of that asset. Right hand side, we have a separate account that holds how we measure the asset's value. When we decline the value, we record it under accumulated depreciation. So whenever you see accumulated depreciation on the right side, that means we're trying to measure uh, the value of the assets, the part that has grown old. Okay, that account goes together with depreciation. We also see depreciation expense, $300. Okay, 
Okay, so this question gives you three T accounts and asks you what is the current book value for the asset. So think about its current value of the asset. That would be using the original $18,000 minus the value that you see under accumulated depreciation, 300. Okay, so the current value of the asset would be, after using it for a month, you can measure it as $17,700. So meaning when it reaches the following month, after June, then this will be $17,400. After July, $17,100. Okay, the following month, $16,800. So we'll continuously to reduce $300. Any questions so far? Now today is a lot of new stuff here that we haven't covered in Chapter 2. Okay, we started from some of the theoretical concepts. Remember matching principle, and we want to match all the expenses, the cost against all the revenues. Okay, here in the adjusting entries, when it reaches uh, the time when we want to do financial statements, we want to make sure that all each and every account actually represents the current status. So all of these adjusting entries, the five categories so far, we talked about two of them. These adjusting entries are trying to help the business uh, update the accounts. And most of these transactions that happen ties to one of the transactions that happened before. So like salary, you have earlier given by weekly salary. But when it reaches the end of the month, if it's not the same date of the pay date, it's not the cutoff point yet, you want to record salary payable. So for prepayments, when we use up a month, we want to record the parts that actually turn into rent expense or supplies expense. For long-term assets, as we use it in the corporation to support business operations, we want to measure the amount of value that has been degraded, has been declined, using depreciation accounts, depreciation expense, and accumulated depreciation. Okay, make sure you get this concept here. Accumulated depreciation is very important to know. And also remember that it has the opposite direct asset. This is kind of like the idea of expenses and dividends. The account itself degrades equity value. Cumulant basically is part of the value that's no longer there for this. It reduces regular assets value. Oh, the book value, basically, you get this amount from looking at these two accounts. Basically, it's already there, 17700 like, The normal balance, later, so under financial statements in Chapter 4, you will see that there's furniture listed first, and then there's accumulated depreciation of furniture listed behind it, right next to it. So 